Hi everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to uh, jump on and show you how to do a little mushroom in acrylic paint. I've been having a lot of fun painting on paper and, and fabrics, and uh, I think it's a really fun way to incorporate a, a couple of different elements into your journals um, by using uh, acrylic paints, markers, uh, anything you have really. Uh, it's, a, it's really just a fun way to explore with different mediums. Uh, so today I wanted to show you how to do a mushroom. Uh, I did a couple of different samples here. So here's an acrylic painting on uh, some coffee dyed paper. Uh, here's a mushroom on a scrap piece of fabric. So you can paint on fabric. You don't need any special paints. Uh, acrylic is recommended just because they dry quickly and um, they will sit on top of the fabric. The only thing I can suggest is using a fabric that's tightly woven, so there's not uh, a lot of spacing inside that the paint will bleed through and it will sit on top. You also wanna keep your paint relatively thin when you paint on fabric so that there is a flexibility and the paint doesn't crack. So there's a little mushroom. And this, this little project that I'm doing is a really great way to use up scraps. So these are all scrap pieces of fabric I have kicking around. And uh, here's another little mushroom that I sewed onto another backing. And again, just I think this is an old sheet or something. So it's just a really great way to incorporate new elements. So you've got the acrylic paint, you've got the two types of fabric, and you have the stitching. So all these textures really add um, a lot of interest into a journal. Now this would make a really fun cover. You know, you can sew another type of fabric behind it and create a cover. Uh, here's some fun little toad stools here. And uh, again, just using the same quickie sketch techniques that I do with my drawings, I'm gonna use with my painting. This is a big mushroom. Um, and here's the daffodil. I know it's not a mushroom, but I wanted to show you that you can also sew the paper to the fabric and it has the flexibility, right? So it's just sewn to a scrap. So we, it's a great way to use up some sketches you might have done that you really like. And you can still, you don't have to just do paper on paper. You can now sew paper to fabric, right? I'm sure that's nothing new, but for me it is. And uh, again, just using up some really fun scraps. So let's get started. You're gonna need some paint brushes. So these are just cheapy dollar store paint brushes. I don't take care of my brushes, so don't spend a lot of money on them. Today we're gonna do paper. So we'll need a piece of paper. So this is my standard coffee dyed paper. And you can see it's also scraps because I've got paint and stuff all over it. Um, a black pen, if you like this sketchy, if you like the sketchy look. So if you want that, you're gonna need uh, just a black pen. And obviously you're gonna need some paints. So you're gonna, in this case, we're gonna use an oxide black. We're using an unbleached titanium. We're using burnt umber. We're using raw sienna and titanium white. So as you can see, hopefully they're all in frame. They're, it's a very limited color palette. So if you wanted to do the red toadstools, obviously you'd need to in, introduce some, some red of some, some kind. So I'm gonna keep it pretty neutral today. I kind of like that look. You're gonna use the little palette here. So I'm gonna try and keep the palette inside the frame of the camera. I also always have a handy piece of um, shop towel to control my water and paint, a sketch pencil, and of course a container of water. All right, let's start. So I have shown you how to do um, sketches of mushrooms, quickie sketches of mushrooms in another video. So I'm not gonna really explain the sketch because uh, we're just gonna get started on it, but you can pause the video anytime you like and just kind of go at your own pace. So as you can see, I'm keeping my sketch light. I'm not putting tons of detail into it because it's gonna get covered with paint until I decide to put detail in it. So I'm just doing a rough sketch right now of the composition of the mushrooms I want. And basically I am just copying the one I showed you so that's the reference I'm using. And it's always good to have a reference with you to copy. So feel free to paint this version. Okay, so you can see very, very simple sketch. Now I'm gonna grab my paintbrush and I'm just using this one. And I'm gonna paint some black and some um, burnt sienna and possibly a little bit of raw sienna. And I'm just gonna fill that in. And you see, I didn't even mix the colors. I just let it mix right on my paper. 
So what, what I like to do is I like to start with the darker shades and move my way into the highlights, which then comes the detail. So I don't wanna paint the whole thing black. I do wanna make sure I stay within the lines, make small adjustments to my sketches. You can add a little bit of water because these are the brand of paint that I'm using is a high, it's a higher end brand. So it's the thicker paint. If you're using like the dollar store paints, you probably won't need to add water because they're a bit on the thin side, but there's no, you can use any acrylic here. You don't have to go out and buy expensive acrylics. Just use whatever you've got. Just a, it's really just an experiment, right? Just having fun, trying to use different mediums, seeing what you like, seeing what you don't like. So I'm gonna paint this backing in here. And normally my palette, my color palette here would be on my right side because I'm right-handed, but because I wanna put it in the frame, if I put it on this side, it'd be dunking my arm in it every five seconds, which is no fun. So you can see I'm just filling in the shape. And again, this is a quickie sketch painting. So quickie painting maybe. Uh, I'm not gonna go into tons of detail. I just wanna capture the form, but this time instead of using a pencil, I'm going to use my paint. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw that in there. I'm gonna rinse my brush. So you can see acrylic dry, acrylic paint dries relatively quick. It's almost completely dry up here. So we can go back in and throw some detail in there. So I'm gonna to switch to just a little bit of a smaller brush. And again, these are just those cheapy dollar store brushes that I like. I'm gonna add some titanium white and unbleached titanium. And a little bit of my raw sienna. You can see all the range of tones that you can get by adding just a little bit of white to your colors. So now I'm just gonna put a little bit of a highlight. So as you can see, we just have a very odd shape here. So now we need to define that shape. And that's what we're gonna do by adding in details here with light. So the light is hitting this, this end. It's kind of coming down like this. So I wanna make sure that the, the highlights are in the right place and that I do capture the form of the mushrooms. So these mushrooms kind of grow up like this. So we're gonna do that. And I talked about that in my other videos about contouring lines where you're really gonna follow the shape that the mushroom will grow. So if I went just straight up and down all the way across, it wouldn't have any form. It'd be still a very flat shape, but because I'm curving as I go, I've now created the form of, the, of these gills underneath this mushroom. So you can see it's starting to look a little 3D already. So let's give um, a highlight to the top of this one. And we're gonna, gonna desaturate that a little bit by adding a little bit more brown. So we're gonna throw in a little bit of a more warmer tone here. And again, it's a very limited color palette. I only have the, the three brown, well, two browns and, a, and the black and white. Sorry, three browns, because I do have the titanium white to me is a, basically a, a light brown, really. Unbleached titanium white, sorry. I'm gonna curve this in here. And I'm just gonna kind of rub my brush. So a lot of people like to blend wet on wet. I like to blend dry on dry. <laughs> And with acrylic paint, because it, the nature of the paint dries so quickly, that it, I kind of really like the dry rub effect where you really kind of rub this dry brush around and it, it slowly builds up color. Now you're gonna find that either works for you or you're gonna find it very frustrating. So when I teach uh, paintings, I, I let people kind of try both ways so they feel what they're most comfortable with because the dry technique can be a little bit frustrating, but if you do like it, it's a very useful technique. It's, it happens to be my favorite. So I'm just gonna go back in with just about some solid titanium white. So you can see it's much lighter than the last, the last bit we did. I'm just gonna rub a little bit of that on there because now I wanna create a textures. You know, I want these mushrooms to have a little bit of texture and you can use your finger if you want just to 
kind of dab it around. Use whatever. I don't like the shape of this mushroom. I think I'm going to build it out a little bit further. Just rub that in a little. Clean that up after. A little bit of highlight on this one. Again, just bouncing my brush, rubbing my finger. Now this acrylic paint won't come off once it's dried. So if you get it on your clothes or whatever, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna dry it, uh, wash it right away. So let's define the top of this mushroom. It's a little bit lost, I feel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna really define the top of these little gills with a little bit of a whiter. It still has the unbleached titanium in it and a little bit of raw sienna, uh, burnt sienna, sorry, but it's it's much more white in it than, than the color we used last. And this is the fun of acrylic paints is you can try it and then you decide, well, I don't like that. Um, and then you go right over top. So I'm gonna warm it up a bit. Hopefully I'm in frame there. So I've got my uh, raw sienna and a little bit of burnt sienna mixed together. So right now I'm finding it very cold drying. So I wanna, I wanna warm the mushrooms up a little bit by adding just a little bit of this nice warm brown. And again, just going back and forth, having fun with it. Throw a little bit of the warm in here. Maybe a little bit back here, a little bit down here. I wanna redefine this section here, I feel is gotten a little lost in this mushroom. So I'm gonna go back to the black, pull that back. And clean my brush. I'm gonna go back to my raw sienna and a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm gonna throw that color in. Just rub it with my finger. Just playing back and forth, having fun with these paints, seeing the, how they work, getting a feel for what I like about them, what I don't like about them. So it's nice to work with the, you know, like a dry style and then a wet style, see what you like. And you, if you find drying, the acrylics drying too fast, frustrating, you can buy what's called an extender and you mix it, you pour it into your paints and mix it and it, it then it kind of creates, um, uh, it makes your paints not dry so quickly. So it feels, they feel, they act a little bit more like an oil paint where they take a lot longer to dry. So if you like that wet on wet technique, then you'll, you'll probably end up liking the extender. So I'm gonna just put a highlight in the top of this stem here, just to separate the two finding they can't visually see the difference between one mushroom and the other. So we do wanna make sure we define our spaces and our shapes. And again, the stems would have texture as well. So as I paint, my paintbrush will grab whatever is wet. So this color here is still wet, so it's gonna grab that and it will create yet another color. And so you can play with these and dab them and uh, kind of play with mixing the colors. The only danger is it can get muddy very quickly, but it's acrylic paint, so you just let it dry and go right over top. So a very, very forgiving medium. So I think I've got the, the form that I like. Uh, I need to put a little bit of gills, uh, a few gills underneath this mushroom. So we're gonna go back to our mixture of titanium and unbleached, and we'll give it a little indication here that there's gills poking through here because they need their texture as well. Again, following the contour. And now I'm gonna go back with some black and some burnt sienna. So a very, very, very dark brown. And I'm gonna just clean up in here. So I'm just gonna to find my shapes just a little bit more. Just so visually you can see what's what, where one mushroom starts and where the shapes start. So you can see it's a very quick sketch. So instead of using markers, I'm just using my, my paints. Go put a little bit more shadow up here. 
And then I'm finding the contrast between this and the dark a little bit too much. So I wanna tone that down after, once it's dried a bit. Cause uh, it, I just find that it's too bright. It's too high a contrast, which I don't want. Put some texture into the stems here. And so you can see that sometimes I, I'm painting away and then I'll overdo it. So I feel like I've gone too dark in here again. So I'll go, I'll go back with my light, but I'm not gonna get upset about it. I'm not gonna get frustrated about it. Just gonna keep playing till I get something I'm happy with. And you'll find like there's just like drawing, there's things that you really like to paint and there's things that you won't like to paint. Okay, I'll put a little bit of shading on this guy. So put a little bit of dark in here and just fluff it out. Okay, so I'm gonna find like a bit of a gray, I think, and tone it down a little. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my titanium white and a little bit of this mixture. Uh -huh. I think I want to add a little bit of gray. It kind of gives it that vintage vibe as well, maybe even a little bit darker. Throw some of that. So now I'm just toning down this white a little bit. It's a little bit too bright for my taste. So I'm just going to tone it down by adding a little bit of gray over it. And then I'm going to pop some gray in here just so the color palette is even. I keep changing the shape of this mushroom. There we go. A little bit of gray in here. And I'm going to throw a little bit of gray in here. Nice and loose. A little bit in the stems. And I'm gonna go back with my final highlight. I almost put my brush in my coffee. <laughs> Done that before. So just a little bit of bright white and maybe a tiny bit of the gray, just so it's not, you can see the difference in value here, much lighter, much darker. So, but it's not a straight white. And then what I like to do is I like to dab a little bit on and then I like to just kind of rub it out with my finger. Just introduces a little bit of texture. So you can you almost feel the sh texture of this mushroom just by looking at it and thinking, you know exactly how that mushroom would feel in your hands. And maybe a couple of dabs of highlight, just where the light might catch a little bit, like in here or something. Just to add a nice range of darks to light without being too high contrast. So same with the stem here. And then we'll put a couple of highlights in some grass. I like to add a little bit more dark at the bottom. So I find if I add a little bit of weight at the bottom here by adding in some dark value, that it kind of grounds the whole painting. And then I'll go back with a little bit of highlight. I really hope I'm in frame here. I haven't... Uh, my camera has to be pretty low in order to grab all the uh, details. So there we go. So now, like I said, acrylic dries quite quickly. So this is all dry except where we just painted. So I'm gonna grab my black pen now. Any black pen will do. And I'm just gonna sketch it out. I like, I like to add the pen myself because I like that look of the sketch. But you don't. You can leave this as it is. You don't have to do this part. But I do like. I don't know why. It just appeals to me. And I guess it's just another uh, bit of texture and another element that's been added in that I really like. So the more textures, the more uh, mediums, you know, paint, paper, and eventually this will get sewn to fabric. And uh, I just, it just appeals to me has that very kind of rustic sketched look. So 
So here we go. This is, and I am doing this quick. You don't have to do this fast, but I like to paint quickly. And again, if you, if you feel like, oh, okay, I've overdone the, this is too much for me, just go back with the paint and just go right over top. Fun, right? Super easy, super fun. Great way to use up scraps. And then don't forget to sign your work. That's important. You just, oops, where's my pen down? Just give yourself a little signature. And there you have it. So I have quite a few, a collection of these. Um, I'll be putting them on my Etsy shop, actually, which is another thing you can do with your sketches if you have a shop. And um, just a little collection. So there's a sample of a quick painting of using acrylic paints. And like I said, you can take the paper and so and sew it straight to a piece of fabric and use it up. And what a fun way to incorporate more details like this into your junk journals. And um, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and I hope you uh, come back and visit me again. If you do like it, please give me a thumbs up um, and please subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more. Have a wonderful day, guys. Take care, bye.